Hello everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to explore our sample application, we are going to see a couple of potential problems that this application has and we are going to see how a centralized store solution can help us easily tackle those problems. We are going to talk about the store architecture in general. So let's get started! What we have here initially is the login page and this is the module that we will be implementing first using NGRX Store, the authentication module. Right now the application is not authenticated, so if we click here in the courses menu entry, we are going to be able to access the courses data. We can see here that we have here a couple of tabs with beginner and advanced courses and if we scroll down we can see that this contains a course list we can switch between the two tabs and we have here a counter saying how many courses are in promotion. Now we are going to click here, for example, on this initial course, the Angular NGRX course. Notice the loading indicator. So we are loading the lessons when we open this page. Now notice the following. If we hit back, we are going to go back here to the All Courses page. Now if we click again the View Course button and we go back to the same course, notice what is going to happen. We are going to see the loading indicator again. If you remember, we have just loaded this exact same data seconds ago. If we go back and we click again, we have just loaded the exact same data a third time. So as we navigate through the application, we are constantly fetching again the same data from the server. In an application with a very large number of users, this would cause a performance problem. So that is the first reason for using a store architecture to reduce the number of HTTP requests that we do to our application server. A second very important reason is to improve the user experience. As the user navigates through the application, we want to minimize the number of spinners that we are continuously showing to the user as the user transitions between the multiple screens of the application. So those are two reasons for considering a store architecture, but maybe those are not the most important ones. Let's go over maybe the most important reason. What we have here on this screen is read-only data. We have here a representation of the course, which is a course card, and we have here a summary of the complete list of courses. In order to calculate this counter here, we have gone through all the courses and we have seen which ones are in promotion and which ones are not, and we have accumulated here the courses in promotion currently. Now what happens if our data is not only read-only, but it's also editable? Let's see, if we click here on this edit button, we have here a pop-up that is going to allow us to edit the data of the course. We are going to be able to edit the title, the description, and we are going to be able to choose here if this is a course in promotion or not using this toggle button. Now whenever we click save here, this is going to send a request to the backend to save the new data in the database. But we want those changes on the editable data not only to be reflected on the backend, but also to be immediately reflected here in the user screen without having to reload the whole thing. So we want the course title to be updated with a new title, we want the description to be modified, and if we have changed the promotion toggle button, we want the counter to reflect that change as well. Actually, if you have noticed, we also are selecting here the category of the course. So if we switch a course from beginner to advanced, we would actually want the course to swap between the two tabs. So as you can see, that's a lot of logic in the UI that we would have to implement for a very simple scenario. Let's see what is the current behavior of the application. So we are going to change here the title simply to NGRX course, we are going to switch it to advanced and we are going to remove here the promotion toggle. So this course is no longer in promotion, so our promotions counter should be decremented from 2 to 1. If we currently hit save in this version of the application that is currently not using NGRX store, a request was made to the backend, this was saved in our server in the database, so we can see here that we have an entry in the server log that says saving course, this happened when we clicked the save button, so the data has been correctly saved in the database. 
But what about the UI? What we have here is a situation where our UI is not in sync with the data on the database. One way of seeing the new data would be to either refresh the application, and we can see here that now this counter here is one, there is currently only one course in promotion and before we had two and the NGRX course is now part of the advanced tab. And we have here the new title of the course. So as you can see, this current behavior of the application is not ideal. What we would like to be able to do is to come here to the edit course pop-up to change the description of the course change the category of the course and whenever we hit save we would like that not only the data gets saved to the database which is currently happening now but we would also like our user interface to reflect the new data changes immediately we would like our user interface to update itself automatically without having to contact the server or show loading indicators to the user we would like to have the UI continuously in sync with the latest data without having to handle the multiple edge cases one by one. For example, we would like to avoid having to write code that specifically detects that the category was changed and then we have to manually switch this course from the advanced tab back to the beginners tab. We don't want to handle these edge cases one by one, instead we want an architectural solution that implicitly covers all possible cases when the data has been changed and the view needs to be updated. Also, we would like to avoid contacting the server unless it's absolutely necessary. We would like to avoid having to fetch the same data again and again as the user navigates through the application. The centralized store solution that we are going to present in the next few lessons is a very elegant solution for all these problems. So let's have a look at it. Let's present the store solution and see how it helps tackle these problems.